Hello everyone, this is Alex Tiki on behalf of PCR Online. It is a great pleasure of being you here with you today, providing the latest news from ACC 2024. Dear friends and PCR companions, it is a great pleasure and honor to welcome Professor Herman Howard, Professor of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and Director of Interventional Cardiology at the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratories at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. We are going to talk about one of the most awaited late-breaking trial of this ACC 2024. Self-expanding versus balloon expandable uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement in patients with small aortic annuli. Primary outcomes from the randomized SMART trial. Prof, thanks so much for the opportunity to discuss this very important trial. Well, thank you very much, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, happy to share with you the results of this trial. Thanks so much. So small annuli is one of the hot topics in the TAVR field. And uh, is, uh, there is a lot of discussion in the community, especially after the OPERA TAVR registry. So uh, we're going to ask you, what is the design and the aim of the SMART trial? So as you correctly pointed out, small aortic annulus is not a uh, rare problem. It accounts for uh, approximately 40% of all patients who undergo TAVR um, the France TAVI registry, the Opera TAVI trial, it was over 40%. And these patients are mostly women. Uh, in our trial, it was 87% were women. It can be even up to 90%. And as you know, women are underdiagnosed, undertreated, and underrepresented in our randomized clinical trials. So the aim of this study was to compare the no two most widely used valves, the self-expanding superannular Evolu platform with the balloon expandable Sapien platform in patients with a small aortic annulus defined by CT scanning as less than or equal to 430 square millimeters, and to look at the um, safety and performance of these two platforms in women primarily who have a small aortic annulus. Uh, so what are the main clinical and anatomical patient's characteristics in the SMART trial? So we randomized a total of 716 patients uh, to one-to-one -to, -one to either an Evolute or a Sapien platform valve. 80% um, were Evolute Pro Plus and 80% were Sapien 3 Ultra valves. And they all had a small aortic annulus. The mean aortic annulus uh, diameter uh, area in the trial was 382 square millimeters. Uh, the mean perimeter was 70 millimeters. Um, about uh, the majority of the uh, self-expanding group received 26 millimeter diameter devices. 90% of the Sapien uh, cohort received a 23 millimeter Sapien 3, um, mostly ultra valves. And then we had two co-primary endpoints that were presenting at ACC. Uh, one year co-primary endpoints. One is a clinical endpoint powered for non-inferiority between the devices. And the second is a valve performance endpoint, bioprosthetic valve dysfunction powered for superiority of the self-expanding platform with a number of secondary endpoints as well. This is a, a scenario, a challenge scenario that uh, we see every day in our cath lab. Uh, so Prof, what are the main results and how we can uh, summarize the main message uh, from this trial, important trial? So the SMART trial met both primary and all five pre-specified secondary endpoints. Um, the uh, first primary endpoint was clinical outcomes of mortality, disabling stroke, and heart failure rehospitalization through one year. And the difference was 1% favoring the self-expanding valve, but that was within the margin for non-inferiority. So it met the non-inferiority endpoint at a p-value of less than 0 0.001. The second primary endpoint was bioprosthetic valve dysfunction, a combination of hemodynamic structural valve dysfunction, non-hemodynamic valve dysfunction, um, thrombosis, endocarditis, and aortic valve reintervention. And this endpoint occurred in 42% of the, of the balloon expandable valves and 9.4% of the self-expanding valves, a difference of 32% which met the superiority endpoint at a p-value of less than 0.001. Uh, 
Uh, there were secondary endpoints that we assessed in a hierarchical fashion because we met both primary endpoints, and they included the mean gradient, which was eight millimeters lower for the self-expanding valves, effective valve orifice area, which was 0.5 centimeters squared larger. It was 1.99 versus 1.50. Uh, Doppler velocity index, which was 0.19 higher for self-expanding valves, uh, bioprosthetic valve dysfunction just in the women cohort, uh, severe prosthesis patient mismatch at one year, which was 6.8% lower for self-expanding valves um, at uh, about 3% versus 3.2% versus 10% uh, in the balloon expandable cohorts. And then we had some secondary endpoints as well that favored self-expanding valves, including less total aortic insufficiency at one year and a better quality of life as measured by the KCCQ uh, ordinal outcome score. They are uh, extraordinary results and uh, we will have uh, for sure a lot of discussion about it. What is your personal perspective? Uh, we need uh, maybe a long-term results. Yes, I think that's an excellent point, Alex. Um, based on the large differences, these were uh, larger than we anticipated in our design. And based on the large differences in valve performance, we do expect that the self-expanding valve platform will demonstrate improved valve durability and outcomes with longer term follow-up. The study is going to continue through five years, and we will have the opportunity to see whether these differences in valve performance affect clinical outcomes as we go in longer term follow up. Prof, thanks so much for your kindness. Uh, it is very important uh, to discuss this trial uh, that is uh, really a very important trial. So thanks so much uh, for your time. You're welcome. I think this really gives us more data by which to make decisions for these patients, which are again, mostly women. And now we can choose um, based on hard data um, between the various platforms as we treat our patients with small aortic annulus. Totally agree. Thanks so much. And to everyone, thanks so much for your attention. Continue to follow us with the latest news from the ACC 2024. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you.